Welcome to Aaron Plays. This will be a playthrough of a Band of Brothers scenario, but the introductory scenario, the Ghost Panzer, which is called Taking a Building. It's pure infantry. Um, it's a hypothetical situation that they use as a, a training scenario. Greetings. This is actually going to be a playthrough of a game that I did recently. I play by email with um, a, a guy that I've met recently. I'm um, playing some face to face games. This is his first foray into Band of Brothers, and also he's relatively new to Vassal. So it's a training exercise. Um, as we were getting close to the end of the scenario, I asked him if it was okay to, because um, I kept all the log files to go through the game um, and add it to my channel. And he was he was up for that. Um, I won't be showing the actual log screen as it goes up, because there was a few, obviously, personal jibs, jabs, and, and, and such forth that um, I don't need to be party to. But um, the general flow of the game, you'll be able to see um, as we go through. I'll be talking it through. So you're going to have my mini-me. Um, up on the screen as we go through. I'm playing the Germans, he's playing the Soviets. We're actually just about to start the second log file. Um, the first one, um, he left a few units unconcealed and I pointed it out to him. And I also mentioned that I did not want to spend my CP, uh, my command point, to go first. Um, if you're relatively inexperienced with the rules and so forth. There are many videos out there that, that do explain the rules. I will explain a few things as, we, as we're going along as when necessary, but this will not be a detailed run through of the rules. Um, I'll bring up the scenario card. Just move me out the way for a moment. All of that. Oh, I don't want to move. Okay, so there's four turns. The Soviets have got 10 squads and one weapons team. Germans have got four squads, one weapons team and two decoys. Okay. Um, to win, the Russian player wins if there are no German units in either of these two building hexes at game end. Okay. So they don't have to actually um, own both hexes. Just got to make sure there's no Germans in them. Okay. The operation range is three to four for the Soviets. It's one to four for the Germans. Germans have got one command point. Soviets have got one command point. Okay. So I will, well, I'll well keep it up there, might we? Move my mini meter to here. Let's try and make it non -intrusive, intrusive as possible. Can I shrink that down? Oh, I can't shrink that down. There we go. There's me. Right. So, over to the, I'm going to work through the way through the log. All right. So he's going to start with some shooting. Okay. So he's revealed the unit. It's the head of this weapons team. Okay. This is at this point, <coughs> first die roll, he scores a one. First die roll of his bands of brothers. He scores a one. Don't I love the dice? Okay. All right. So he asks if that's a hit. Yes, that's a hit. Okay. Um, he passes it back to me to reveal the unit and probably suppress. So shot that he did. He's fired with a five power of seven. Okay. So that's the, the number here. Against myself in the building. Okay, I've got defense of two for the building and one for concealed. So that's neg three. So it's a four was the actual result he needed. Um, he rolled a one. If that had been adjacent, that would have been a, a reduction of my unit, but it wasn't adjacent. So what actually happens there is that I get revealed and I become suppressed. Um, if my casualty number here had been a three, then they would have been reduced as well. 
because one plus three is four, which is um, less than, equal to or less than the result he actually needed to score a hit. Okay. Which I go through in the log for him to explain all the hell that happens. Okay, so on the next log file, he reveals a unit in here, it's 5-2, and they, they fire, as you can see the fire arrow, goes across. Okay, so this will be a fire attack of five, taking away three, he needs a two on a D10. He goes a seven. No result. You then mark units as used. Then you'll try a unit from H6 on the G5. So again, the unit he's brought out is 504, taking away one for a wooden building, one for the concealment. It's two, so he needs again a two. Which he rolls. Begin his luck, he says. He's holding up. Yes, indeed. Okay. So he asked me if I can reveal that unit um, and suppress it. Okay. One of my two decoys, thankfully, or not thankfully, or, well, we should roll a two because I think the decoy would have still been on the map, but it reveals the decoy, at which point it gets removed. And then it's back to it's over to me. He's done three activations. Weapons team there, squad there, squad there. So it's actually over to me to activate. So uh, my operation numbers one to four. So I have to op op activate between one and four units. I decide it's time for my weapon team to join in the fray. Got five power of eight. It's quite nice. I'm firing it on this group here. Want to suppress as much as possible. Okay, I know his weapon team's fired, but my aim here is to keep that as quiet. If I can get maximum suppression on it, brilliant. So it's five out of eight, minus one for the wooden building is seven. And so it's seven on the actual revealed unit, um, and then an extra additional minus one for the concealed unit, which we put roll one dice for all units in the hex. I roll a seven, which suppresses it. And the seven is not good enough to suppress the concealed unit. So then it's back to him. I only activate the one unit, um, which suppressed his weapon team. That suppression will be removed at the end of the turn, but uh, I was hoping obviously for a better result there. Okay. So I then passed it back to him. So he fires the second unit in H6, F5 this time. In the building, and you can see the, the firing arrow lines go across. Five power three, it rolls a five, not good enough. Unit in G7 is revealed, second unit. See the firing arrow going across. He needs a two, it rolls a 10. And then he reveals the unit in C5, the one that I failed to hit. And he's firing across the street. By about four minus two, and he's a two, rolls a nine. So as he puts it, shooting wide this turn. Okay. Back to me. 
Yeah. Back to me now. I can again activate between one and four units. I activate this unit to move. As it's moved from concealment terrain to concealment terrain, it can remain concealed unless you're moving adjacent or we just move into the open. Unlike in ASL, if you move, uh, if you, I suppose you move only one hex in ASL, that'd be an advanced move. When I'm talking about ASL, because I play it a lot. Okay, so that's one of the differences. If you just do a normal move, you don't do advanced moves. This is two, that's a two movement point move. I could have moved into this hex as well, and then into this hex and remain concealed. Um, but there we go. And then I'll pass it back. Have we seen some more fire from the Soviets? Again, ideally trying to get second level of suppression on my unit. I don't think he wants to dash across the road whilst I've still got a round of six showing. I have power of four, minus two. Rolls a six, no good. Any more fire? C6 to E6. There it is. Five power, again, requiring a two or less. No. And last one. This actual activation. Five power three. E rolls. Another one. As he put it, as you roll enough one in five chances, some of them will play off. That is a fair comment. 20% chance of scoring hits. Um, you roll 10 of them, two of them should come off. Law of averages. Okay, so. Passing it back. I revealed and suppressed the unit. I have to have, obviously have to fire. So I'm again trying to keep these guys is the aim out of the action. I have to pass a morale check to be able to fire there. Now that I want to activate this unit, because they are suppressed, I do it. in actual fact, Again, this is a bit of the rules. If you know the rules, yes. If you don't know the rules, just point it out. Every time you want to do something, you've got to pass a morale check. But these guys, your most units at the fresh status, the morale's 10. So you have to roll equal to or less your morale on a D10. It's going to be automatic. But once it gets suppression, and it just looks at the yellow number, the yellow counter suppression, the yellow number, they've got to pass a, that morale check. And it's a six or less. I unfortunately just rolled a nine, so they didn't buck up the courage to actually fire. Okay, I then tried to fire from here to here again, needing a morale check. Six, I rolled a seven. So yeah, not doing good, too good so far for the Germans in this case. Try to fire twice. No luck. This is actually the 10th log in the game. There's 10, in, you know, five from me, five from him, back and forth. Um, we're still in the first turn. So, what does he do now? He activates this squad and he moves him in. in he, he's feeling lucky. He moved it into the open here. Okay. I was suggesting it, well, trying to get to the buildings. So as I'm used, I do have the option now, well, to try and do what's called final um, opportunity fire onto these guys. I've got to pass a rail check. So let's see if I do. Okay. So they have to pass morale trick first. And there they go. They pass it with a one. Fortuitous. And at the last they seen Keem and someone's actually trying to knock on their door. So now the shot. Okay. 
And now that they pass them around track, they fire at full effect. There's no um because of the suppressor that they fire at half firepower or anything like that. Pass from rail check, you up, operate as normal. So the firepower um, is five. Because when you're using opportunity fire, you use the fire, the, the proficiency fire on the counter. So this is your full firepower. This is your proficiency firepower. When you opportunity fire, you use that number. So it's five. Firing adjacent is plus three. That takes them to eight. And they're moving in the open and another four, nine, 10, 11, 12. But because it's final op fire, as in a desperate measure, there's minus two on that. So it takes it down to 10. So call it a dice, it's an auto hit. However, you always miss on a 10. So 10 needed to hit. To hit. I rolled a five. Okay. So they are reduced. Why are they reduced? Five plus the three, which is a casualty number, which is here, is eight, which is equal to or less than the result required to hit them. So they become reduced. Um, so I put, but there, yeah, we were, we were only acting numb. So I'm passing it back to him there. I mark them as used, which is actually not technically correct. If you'll point out when, in, in his next log file, they can try and pass a morale check to actually continue. Yeah, the, in the next log he mentioned, you, you can roll a morale check um, on that unit, but their morale, as they're fully suppressed, is only a one, so he needs a one. Um, he rolls an eight, so that it does end their turn. Okay, and his last unit to be revealed, the one in C7. Okay, fire across there. Firepower five minus two, because of the building needs a six, um, sorry, needs a, a four, a three. Fire two is three. Rolls a six, and it passes it back to to me. Okay, he advises me at that point to charge charge his positions. <laughs> but to me to to activate to finish off the turn because everything like his is activated. I'm going to activate this unit here to bring it into reserve. Okay, and then the unit at the top there, I just marked as used. Um, I could have marked it as op fire, but he, he's not got anything else that he can do. Okay, so that's the end of the operations phase, route phase. Okay, he has to check for his route first. Um, after that, if he's still here, I need to check for mine, my route. As I just said, my unit in E6 will only have to check his remains in that position. So I pass the log back to him at that point. His morale check, he needs a one, he rolls a four. He says, you might as well use my CP. His command point at this point, yeah, because at the present moment with the roll of four, that eliminates that unit. Because one plus four, sorry, four, one plus three is four. Oh no, he'd be okay still on a four. He rolls a two on his second roll with the command point. He has to retreat this time, but um, he's not eliminated. They fall back into that building there. Making sure there's no commissars around. And that's um, their turn done. done. Um, okay. 
After our phase will be melee, there are none. So then it's the end of the turn. There's a, a, a reset button, recovery, which I then press, which removes all the use markers and reduces all fully suppressed to suppressed and removes all just suppressed markers. So that's the situation at the end of the turn, or as I just moved on to turn two. Whereupon I would do declare I will use my CP, my command point. Each faction has only got faction side army in this scenario has one command point and i'm going to use my command my precious command point to activate a unit which will be my weapon team in the hope as you can see i'm declaring the fight to keep this guy his weapon team which can do the most damage to my guys here i want to keep him suppressed if i can so it's a five power of eight minus one for the wooden building is seven Roll a six, which keep both of those guys suppressed. Remember, it's one die roll for all the units. One of the things that's um, in there to actually discourage stacking, you fire one, one unit at a time. So you don't get any real bonus for stacking, but, but for adding extra firepower to a shot. And then if someone gets lucky on a shot and you've got two units and it, it takes both of them out of the action. So, just as an elegant little way to, to actually discourage stacking in the system, which which works. Um, really only needs to stack or want to stack if you've got nowhere else to actually put them, which in this case is here, because he needs to get maximum shots across um, at the time. But yeah, so they're both suppressed. Um, as you notice by putting the markers on them over here. Okay. Okay, so he's going to try, well, he will try and activate the weapon team in C5. They've now got to pass a morale check to be able to fire, which they do. We need a six, the fire, he's declaring the fire across the road. Okay, firepower is seven at minus two. Because I say, if you pass the morale check, you fire at full effect, so it's a five. He rolls a six, so no effect. Okay. In G7 next, that's, um, G7 is over here. There you go, clearing the fire across with that thread. Needs a three or lower, rolls a five, no effect. Mark is used. Unit in H6, a lot of firepower coming into that um, unit. Need a three again, rolls an eight. Okay, so this turn, all that activation, not much luck for the Russians. He hands it back to me. Okay, um, so I activate the squad in, in E6, whilst it's still activated, activatable. Okay, and again, continuing my idea, let's get these, try and get these to double suppression. It takes them longer to, to come back. Okay, so it's five power six minus one for the wooden building. Need a five, I roll a four. So that suppressed both of them. So full suppression. So again, showing the disadvantages of multiple stacking. As I can only, well, as I can activate one unit, I just decide to activate one unit at that point. Is it the, 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 I fired, I did something, I didn't pass the log back. The log files are therefore quite short. Um, this is ideal for me in many ways, because um, first thing in the morning, I get a log, quickly do it, be while I'm having my coffee, while I'm getting ready for work, boom, come back from work, there's a log back from my opponent, and it just keeps the game going smoothly. I've tried Vassal quite a few times with some really big games, because yeah, obviously I, I'm, I'm limited in space for maps, so playing with something uh, uh, um, with, with large areas space for maps, I mean, Vassal's useful for that, but then you've got to look when your opponent's moving, it's a big game. You could be looking at Vassal for an hour, an hour and a half while they do their move. You're clicking your way through it and checking things and such for. Um, after a day working on a computer, it's the last thing I want to do. Um, they actually go through a log and then do a log. 
Whereas something like this is boom, it's quick, boom, fire's finished. Um, and yeah, you're not sitting a long time on a computer like I'm doing now, actually making these videos. But um, I view it as something different while making the videos. I'm not, I don't see it. Look, I know I'm looking at a computer because I'm using Vassal. Um, but to me, I'm talking to a camera um, and talking, you know, to you guys. So it, it, it's a different feel to just look at a computer and using a mouse and clicking my way through it. So anyway, sorry for that little aside, um, you know, be pontificating there, but there we go. That's that's sort of why I like these sort of games on Vassal rather than the long, the large ones. Oh, you can get the whole map on the board and on your computer and it saves it. I do find it tedious to do, um, go through a Vassal game. With, I'm, I'm doing it again, I'm pontificate, but going through a Vassal game, which has got an hour worth of moves in it. Okay, so he's going to try and activate the unit in D7. Again, he says try because he's got a roll morale check of five. They're on eight. They're not interested. They just want to get recovered. Next, the unit in C6. That's this one here. Um, he's carrying on with his policy of fire across that road, trying to get them double suppressed. He rolls a five on that shot. And then he fires another unit across here. All right. Um, fire five, minus two. He rolls a one again. And that's enough to suppress me. Okay, so we're into the log 19 at this point. So I, at this point, I think I make a mistake here. I send another guy into there, going against what I was just saying about these guys over here. Um, I put some reinforcements in there because I was getting worried about them being suppressed. So he cannot fire that move. Um, so let's see if he does so or not. Um, okay. He decides not to hot fire. Feels that his fire proficiency firepower is not good enough, which is true. They are quite low. That's a the second number on the five values here. But remember, a one is always a hit. Ten percent chance, but ten percent is better than no chance. But he decides not to. Okay. He then tries to activate the unit under here, needs a one, rolls a four. It's six. Rolls an eight. And I'll see it is G7. Rolls a one. And that's where it comes to haunt me. Fully suppressing the guy that was already in there and makes me reveal the other unit in that hex. That's the problem with stacking. I know that. I still did it. I place a couple of units on op fire in case anything decides to dodge across the roads. He decided not to. I, I, I seem to be missing a log. Well, I thought I, I, I had them all. Um, I'm missing log 22, 23, um, he decides not to do any, uh, I assume he fired and was no effective. Um, that end, at that end of the op phase, no routes, no melees, 
on to turn three, as he puts it. Um, I declare I think I'll fire my, my CP again, but I'm going to pause this video at this point. It's been long enough. So we've done the first two turns, which has primarily been shooting across the road. I'm feeling okay at this point as the, the Germans, um, though I am beginning to rue moving two units across here into here. Uh, after I'd done it, I thought, why did I do that? But there we go. These things happen. Um, until the next video, thank you very much for watching. All the best.